Hello, thanks for joining me here at Working for the Word. My name is Andrew, and this is the podcast where we talk about Bible translation. And today is going to be a little different. We're going to talk about Psalm 107 and its relationship to Lamentations 3. This came out of a conversation I had over Skype recently with a translation team that's doing an Old Testament. They're nearing the end of their project, and I've been helping them with the Book of Lamentations. Now, if you remember, there was an episode a while back that I did on Lamentations about the heart of God and the heart of Lamentations. So, if you haven't listened to that one yet, it would be a good place to start before you listen to the rest of this episode. So as we saw in that other episode, Lamentations is a chiastic structure, and that means that one of the most important parts of the book is going to appear in the middle of it, and then you have the beginning, mirrors the end, and so forth. There are five chapters, so that makes a nice mirror structure. So you have chapter three is the center, and then two chapters on the outside of that structure. And then right dead center of the book in 332 we have this verse that says though he cause grief he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love so once again it says though he cause grief speaking of Yahweh he will have compassion according to the greatness or the abundance or the multitude of his steadfast love or his chesed. I think we've talked about this before on this podcast. This is a key term when we're talking about Bible translation. We talk a lot about these key biblical terms that are very important words that if you don't really get these right, you're going to have some problems in your translation. Obviously, some words in the Bible are more important than others, right? So justification, for example, is probably more important than the word to sleep. Steadfast love is probably more important than the word for pot or something like that. So you get the idea. When we get to these big words that describe the heart of God, like steadfast love, chesed, then we have to be really careful and have lots of conversations to try to figure out how how is the best way, what is the best way to express this in your language. And usually this requires a lot of conversation to give them the full range of its meaning. A word like chesed, steadfast love, is a very rich word. If you look at these lexical entries in different lexica, you're going to find very long articles that talk about a lot of different things. And some people have translated this like in the KJV, mercy. Others have said loyal love. Others have said unfailing love. So there's there's this whole range of different ways to try to describe this one simple word in Hebrew. Now, because these translators I'm working with don't actually know Hebrew and haven't studied it and don't have access to be able to sort through entries in a lexicon, what I like to try to do is point them to other verses that expand on a central topic or idea or word so they can get a more full-orbed picture of what's going on with it. As we say in translation and exegesis, context is king. And so what we did on our phone calls, I said, let's go to Psalm 107. And Psalm 107 is something that's really dear to my heart. It's grown more and more rich over the years since I put it to music. And it's just one of those psalms that's very special in its structure and the ideas that it conveys and the way that it conveys them. So you have basically four vignettes in the psalm. You have a little vignette of people who are wandering and lost in a desert. You have another vignette of people who are prisoners. And then the third vignette talks about people who are in distress and about to die. And then finally, you have some some people who have gone out into the sea, and they're about to die because of a storm. 
Now, what does this have to do with chesed, with steadfast love? Well, the psalm begins with, Oh, give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his chesed endures forever. So it's setting the theme of an adoration and praise to God for his chesed. And we know this because of the structure and how there's repetition of a kind of a chorus throughout the whole chapter, which we'll see. So let's read it together. Verse 2, let the redeemed of Yahweh say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. So here we start our first vignette. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them, and here's the first chorus, let them thank Yahweh for his chesed, for his wondrous works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. So this Reversal is one of the themes that's going on in this psalm. You have people who are fainting away, hungry, thirsty, dying, and there's this reversal because of Yahweh's chesed. And we go on. Some sat in darkness, second vignette, and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed down their hearts with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. So there's this, always this repetition of this crying out in their distress, and he delivers them the reversal of their situation, even though they don't deserve it, right? Because here, it's grace. It's very clearly grace working here because they were there because they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned his counsel. So we continue in verse 14. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and burst their bonds apart. Let them thank Yahweh for his steadfast love, for his chesed, for his wondrous works to the children of men. For he he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. So he frees people. Third vignette, verse 17. Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Here we go. The repeated chorus. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank Yahweh for his chesed, for his wondrous works, to the children of men and let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy so you're starting to get a picture if you don't understand what chesed really is you're starting to get this really concrete idea from these examples of how it works because this is whole song is a praise of that characteristic of god and giving these examples that are so specific and so beautiful. So it's really, at the core, God giving things that people don't deserve, this this grace, right, that's manifesting itself, that's coming out of his chesed. Then we have the fourth vignette. Here we go. Verse 23, Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of Yahweh, his wondrous works in the deep. 
For he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wit's end. Or in Hebrew it says, and all their wisdom was swallowed up. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. So there's some foreshadowing there, probably, of Jesus. And then it also reminds us of Jonah. So these sailors really were about to die. They cry to Yahweh, and then it says in verse 31, Let them thank Yahweh for his chesed, for his wondrous works to the children of men. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Then there's one more section that starts in verse 33. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste. So there's definitely an allusion probably here to Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Uh, He turns this nice place into a salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants. Verse 35, he turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. So you have this Exodus imagery. And there he lets the hungry dwell and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing, they multiply greatly, and he does not let their livestock diminish. And then, verse 39, when they are diminished and brought low through oppression, evil, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. Then we get to a great reversal in verse 41, which is in some ways the climactic part of the psalm. I could read it for you, but let me just sing it for you. So after walking through that with the translation team, they definitely had a better grasp on what this chesed word is all about. Now, of course, they've translated this a lot already. They've already translated the Psalms. So I encourage them, look at what you have, what you've decided already for your key term in Psalm 107. And let's make sure that's consistent right here. Now, This is one of the reasons I am so passionate about teaching translators Hebrew, because they really should not have to depend on me to know when key terms like this are being used. 
And although there are certain tools that they can use in the software, it's not the same as having the security and the surety of being able to see with your own eyes, okay, yes, in this verse, I see in the Hebrew, this is this key term, and we need to make sure we're consistent here. And it's interesting that Yahweh, this chesed that he has, it can be in a plurality. So we can't say that in English if we say unfailing love or steadfast love. We can't say loves, his steadfast loves. And this is probably why the KJV went with mercy, because we can say mercies. But in this last verse, what we have is the first time in the whole chapter that it appears in plural. So it's this beautiful admonition. If you're wise, if you're wise, think about these things, guard these things. Literally, it says guard these things. All these things that you just saw, how God has worked in history, how he works and continues to work in history, guard them, keep them. And if you're wise, also consider, make sure you consider the chesed's the plural chesed of Yahweh. Another way you can translate that last part is whoever's wise, let him attend to these things and let them pay attention to or consider diligently the chesed's of Yahweh. So it's worth meditating on. And if you want to be wise and if you are wise, then you're going to spend time paying attention to how Yahweh acts in this way. And as we saw, these big reversals are basically grace. Grace for those who don't deserve these reversals. And I think the chesed of Yahweh is definitely preparing the way for people to understand the grace of the cross, the great reversal of the cross. All the crazy reversals of Jesus should definitely make people, if they're wise, look at the Old Testament and say, this is Yahweh himself. This is how he shows his chesed. So I was really happy that the translation team was able to improve their translation, make it more consistent overall. And I am very excited for the day because these translators are attending our Hebrew class that we're giving over the next six months. They're attending it, and so I'm looking forward to the day with joy when they will be able to make some of these calls for themselves. And they'll be able to sustainably keep revising and improving their translations for the rest of their lives. So thanks for listening. This is a short one. Next time, stay tuned for a wonderful interview with Elizabeth Robar. So take care and may you spend this day paying attention to and considering diligently the chesed of Yahweh.